Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order for the city of San Juan at 6 p.m. and we rise for invocation. Mr. Arjona, can you lead us, sir? Pray and ask this meeting be successful and blessed. Guide us, give us wisdom from the board commissioners and the mayor makes important decisions. Amen. Face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. this month. Mayor, I believe you have a proclamation in front of you. That's correct. Is Mr. Andrew Ken is not here? No? I know he's very involved. Yes. In yeah. Okay. At this time, I'll go ahead and read the Motorcycle Awareness Month for May 2019. Whereas motorcycles riding is a popular form of recreation transportation for thousands of people across the state and the nation. And whereas motorcycles are common economical means of transportation that reduces fuel consumption, road where and contributes significant weight to the relief of traffic parking congestion. And whereas the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and Motorcycle Safety Foundation have named May as Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. Whereas states and motorcycle organizations across the country will be conducting a variety of activities to promote the importance of motorist awareness, safety sharing the road motorcycles, and remind riders to make themselves more visible to others. And whereas the City of San Juan wishes to promote the safety campaign of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in their effort to ensure the safety and well-being of all. Where, whereas all highway users should unite in the safe sharing roadways throughout the City of San Juan, Hidalgo County, and American Bike Association with all others in the roadway. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Mario Garza, by the power vested in me as Mayor of the City of San Juan, along with Mayor Pro Tem Pete Garcia, Commissioner Jesus Jesse Ramirez, Commissioner Ernesto Neto Guajardo, Commissioner Lenny Sanchez, hereby proclaim the month of May 2019 Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month and urge all motor vehicle operators to join in the effort to keep our highway safe. Thank you. The next item under presentation is presentation of proclamation proclaiming May the 5th to the 11th, 2019 as Drinking Water Week. Uh, we have Mr. David Salinas. Good evening, uh, Mayor Commissioners. Good evening, sir. For over 40 years, the American Water Works Association has celebrated Drinking Water Week uh, different times during the month of May. Uh, this is a very unique situation for us water professionals to be able to celebrate with the customers that we serve and bring them uh, more into the fold about what happens, what truly happens with, during, during the treatment of water from when we get it from the river all the way to when we put it back into the river. So uh, the, drink, uh, the American Water Works Association and the rest of the country along the international will be celebrating a, uh, May 5th through the 11th as Drinking Water Week. As part of the celebration, there'll be some uh, news articles that will be coming out. I'll be submitting some, some items for social media. Uh, I'll also be having uh, some flyers at City Hall uh, so that uh, as people come in to pay the water bills, they, they understand the need and, and the, the vital uh, use of water that, uh, that we have in the industry and what it really takes to treat uh, every single gallon of water before it gets for us to be able to use it and to make sure that we conserve it because it is a very finute resource of water. So uh, on Friday, I do plan to have some punch and cookies at City Hall to give away to the public as they come in uh, of that week on the 11th. So, so they'll be able to uh, you know, ask questions and, and as, they, as they come in to pay the water bill. So thank you all for the proclamation. I'll go ahead and read that for you, sir. Uh, <coughs> Drinking Water Week, May 5th through 11, 2019. Whereas water is the most valuable natural resource, and whereas only tap water delivers public health protection, fire protection, support for our economy and the quality of life we enjoy, and whereas any measure of a success society, low morality rates, economic growth, and diversity 
productivity and public safety are in the same way related to access, safe water, and whereas we are all stewards of the water infrastructure upon with future generations depend on, whereas each citizen our city is called upon to help protect our source waters from pollution, to practice water conservation, and to get involved in local water issues by getting to know their water. Now, therefore, be resolved that I, Mario Garza, by the power vested in me as mayor of the city of San Juan, along with Mayor Pro Tem P. Garcia, Commissioner Jesse Ramirez, Commissioner Ernesto Neto Guajardo, and Commissioner Lenny Sanchez, hereby issue this 23rd day of April 2019, proclaimed May 5th through the 11th, 2019, as Drinking Water Week. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you, Mr. The next item, Mayor, uh, presentation recognizing the National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, which was April the 14th to the 20th. Uh, even though it was last week, there was a luncheon. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and myself were able to make to, to, to the luncheon. But uh, what I want to say is these are the individuals, young individuals that are behind the desk, answering the calls, giving some sort of numbers that only they know what those numbers mean. But uh, here we have uh, Chief and Sergeant uh, Garcia. Yes, Mayor, good evening, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, so uh, this week, every year, uh, the second week of April, communication personnel, uh, they are recognized, and uh, we wanted to come before you all and uh, recognize our dispatchers. They are the calm behind the chaos at times, and uh, they take, uh, on an average, about 20,000 calls every year. So uh, they assist uh, and uh, help everybody uh, they can, and they, they get all different types of multiple calls. So we got Sammy Arroyo there. Uh, he's been with us almost uh, 10 years. We got Jennifer Gutierrez. We got Rolando Suarez. We got Ananda De La Rosa. Uh, our new uh, dispatcher, we got Saul Guzman. So hey Mireles and Alberto Cantu couldn't be with us. Uh, they're uh, working. And, and of course, we got Sergeant Garcia. He's been with the department for quite a while. He supervises all the dispatchers. So they do a tremendous work. And uh, every, every year, uh, we, uh, we want to make sure that they are recognized, uh, even though they're not out on the roads, but uh, they are the ones that are eyes and ears for law enforcement, for the police officers. So uh, we want to recognize them. And on behalf of, uh, of the police department, we, uh, we want to give, dedicate this plaque to them uh, with the mayor's and the city manager's permission. I uh, would like to take a photograph of them. So, and it just reads here, uh, Telecommunicators Week 2019 to uh, Sergeant Rolando Garcia, Semi Arroyo, Rolando Suarez, Saul Guzman, Suhey Mireles, Alberto Cantu, Hernando La Rosa, Jennifer Gutierrez, on behalf of all the Swan Police Department personnel, all the police officers, administration, uh, everybody, even our animal control officers now, that, that we are dispatching them. Uh, in appreciation for your service to the San Juan Police Department and the uh, citizens of the city of San Juan, Texas. Uh, congratulations, and uh, thank you for the hard work you guys, you all do. So, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, if I may, on behalf of the Mayor, Commissioners, I'd like to present this token of appreciation to, to your staff. So do something.
Moving on, Mayor Commissioners, tonight we have uh, on the presentations, we have the uh, presentation on departmental reports. Tonight we have the Department of Finance, Police Department, Municipal Court, the Fire Department, and Department of Utilities. Every director is here, ready, available. Should you have any questions? Any questions for... Go ahead, sir. Sure. Uh, yes. Mr. Garza, as far as the brush pickup and then the brief pickup, are we back on schedule? Uh, right now, we're in the still on the northeast side. We're in the Nida Street Bar 4 area. Uh, we should be back on schedule by early next week. What is the, e uh, the ETA on the uh, the grapplers? If we do have grapple, the grapple truck, the newest. That's newest, correct. They should be arriving here in the early part of June. Early part of June. And yes, do we have the other two operable or? There are two. Uh, uh, one was down for several days this uh, past week, but they're right now they're both operating. Also, uh, who takes care of the utility posts? Dave, or who? You, you do, sir? The utility, pl the utility posts for the area lights for the city? The utility posts. Uh, yeah. I did get a, a uh, concern. I addressed it to the planning department. They submitted a work order. I contacted the resident, and he was going to contact uh, Magic Valley on the status of the repair. Is it a possible way to, to uh, maybe have the fire the police department talk to the chief? So we actually, the officers actually patrol at night, and they can actually address and actually pinpoint the uh, the lights are off. If we could s do something like that, I know there's a lot of areas in our city that are that are down. So if we can please do that. And that's pretty much what I have. <coughs> uh, so we set for the Saturday cleanup. We're all set. Uh, we got. Uh, Five locations set up. Uh, we already spoke to the uh, school district. They're on board as far as the school buses and cleaning of the schools. Uh, we also had Parks and Rec helping us out. So it's going to be a neighborhood slash tire roundup. So we are pretty much uh, preparations are set. That means we you know, pick up all the tires that we could bring in. Um, we also can bring mattresses and sofas and. All this stuff that's out there. All the five so locations will be. We can make the public know that where we are and let them know that they can bring it in now, you know. Chief, uh, in reference to the uh, Thursday night cruising, how are we doing on that? Are we still trying to control that or? Mayor, that is correct. Uh, we we work in it and uh, uh, the last. Uh, Two Thursdays ago was slow. Last Thursday got active again, so we're going to work it uh, this Thursday as well. So we always have someone working it, try to uh, slow it down. So it just depends on the, uh, I guess, on the, on the messages that are sent out there, publicized it for them to get together. So, but we're working it. We're trying to do as the best we can there. So sometimes we have low, uh, slow uh, nights, and sometimes we have very active nights. So I was just informed uh, this earlier today that uh, last Thursday. Yeah, you got active again, so they expect yeah. more people this Thursday again. So we're gonna have some people out there. Yeah, as long as you know we we can get a uh, police presence, you yes, know. Um, really, also, chief, uh, during the day, uh, I've noticed that we identified that there's a lot of racers during the day also, yeah. and usually from the hours of, uh, and I'm pretty sure chief, <laughs> chief can attest to that, the chief, the fire chief, where we're out there yesterday and today, and, and you can see the racers like broad daylight, and the and the substations there, so. There's no uh, respect for law enforcement, so we can actually be from the area to uh, safe our, our citizens are, are commuting back and forth. Yes, sir. The we'll, we'll handle that. Yeah, <coughs> we're interested. Maybe we need an unmarked car. Actually, we do. We can do some co co yeah, uh, that one. Yes. Yeah. We, ha we have done some, and uh, we have our investigators go out to work it as well. Yeah. So they, we we try to change it, change it up a little bit. Uh, we just have too many too many you know uh, vehicles out on the road. So well, we do have a traffic unit, correct? Oh, we that? do have a tra traffic unit? Yes, we do. Yes, sir. <coughs> if I may, Mayor. Go ahead, sir. I just want to thank uh, both Chief Gonzalez and Chief uh, Garza. I know you guys participated with the Boys and Girls Club presentations that they had during their, their week of, of open house. So thank, thank you guys for us. They did an awesome job. Right. Any other questions? If not, we'll go ahead and move on. Go ahead, sir. The next item on the public hearing in ordinances, conduct a second public hearing for the voluntary annexation of the proposed Hacienda San Fernando subdivision Binaro Lot 7, Block 9, 
and Lot 5, Block 13, Clause of Subdivision of Portions 71 and 72, as per map recorded in Volume 0, Page 4, Map Records, Hidalgo County, Texas, located approximately 1,000 feet on Nebraska Avenue along the south side of Moore Road. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, this is the annexation. It's uh, 18.45 acres uh, located on Moore Road between Nebraska and Stewart Road. Uh, if you look at the annexation uh, calendar, uh, this is the second reading uh, for the public hearing. Um, after this, we'll have the first reading for the ordinance and then the second uh, reading uh, for the ordinance as well. Uh, this is going to be a 73 lot uh, residential subdivision, but they'll bring that uh, plat once uh, this is annexed to the city. With that being said, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and open it up at 6.21 p.m. Is there anyone here for or against? For or against? Any questions for Mr. Robert in reference to this item? If not, I'll go ahead and close it at 6.21 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next item of the appointments, consider removal and appointment of board members related to the Civil Service Board. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, in front of you, I put um, a few documents regarding uh, to the Civil Service Board. There is an attendance record in the first page and then two applications that were received. Um, and this is uh, for, for a reappointment or uh, removal. Where, where did you say you had the... I placed it there. It looks like this. Yes. Oh, Sheen. I'm sorry, man. I'm trying to steal your... <laughs> okay. And this is for the place of Mr. Juan Jose Vasquez. Uh, he submitted an application for reappointment. For and reappointment? Yes. He's part of the civil service. And then there's another one for Mr. Jaime Castillo. That's a new application. So, so, so here on Mr. Vosk, it expired February 27, 19. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So now, can what about the other ones? The other ones, are we just wait until they finish off their term, or right. can we go ahead and? Well, you can you can remove um, at any. Okay. At oh, any that's time. Just, yeah. Okay. That's my that's my yes. question. Any recommendations? To make a motion to re reappoint Mr. Juan Vasquez. Okay. Let's send a motion. Is there? Okay. There's a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> the next item, Mayor Commissioners, is under discussion of possible election. Consider authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for uniform, laundry, and facility services under the bid 19-0303-29. Mayor Commissioners, the reason we went out for bids on this particular item is because we have no idea when was the last time that we went out for bids. It must have been more than five years. However, based on the information that was submitted to us by Cintas Corporation out of Mercedes and Unifers out of McKellen, Texas, a uh, recommendation from staff and myself is to keep the current providers. As you can see, the, uh, the items and that they were bidded out, uh, it uh, makes whatever they listed, it's, it's uh, more beneficial <coughs> to the city to keep them the, the, the way it is. So that's our recommendation, but you can make Mr. Renekheim is here to answer any questions that you may have. Your recommendation is to Unifirst. 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 Now, now, for how long is this, uh, how long are we planning to keep this contract, or is it like a two, they agree, three, they, five year? They've agreed to one year contract renewable, you know, Perfect. for three years. Okay. And, and if, we, if we have an opportunity to go into a three year contract, mm -hmm. the pricing is even better. Um, what, what's the difference? Do you know by the top of your head? Off the top of my head, no, but it would be significant overall. I mean, the, it's better pricing all overall. And, and, and it, what they've got is a, it's a buy board pricing when they go to the three-year uh, right. contract versus a one-year. So that's the reason the, the pricing drops. Okay. So, so your recommendation is to... To keep it as is. One of the things is, is that uh, we don't have to do any, any type of a 
new names or broider or anything like that. So it's already there. So make a motion to go ahead and uh, have Unifirst with that one year contract. There's, is there a second by Commissioner Sanchez? Oh, Garcia? Sanchez, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. The next item on the contractual resolutions, consider authorizing the police chief to enter into Homeland Security Memorandum of Understanding between the City of San Juan Police Department and the City of Harlingen Police Department to establish joint operational procedures for the Law Enforcement Emergency Regional Response Team. Chief? Yeah, Mayor Commission, this is a standard MOU that we have all the different agencies. Uh, Harlingen uh, has submitted a request to be um, part of our team. Uh, they recently uh, received uh, I believe $38,000 in grant money, and the purpose, the only way that they can get that uh, grant money is becoming a member of our, of our regional team because uh, uh, grant money is only allocated to regional teams. So we are one of two regional teams in the Rio Grande Valley. The other regional team is the Bomb Squad from McAllen and Bronzeville. So is there a motion approved? Question over real quick. Uh, Chief, uh, the operation of the alert is still the way it was back then that uh, the ones that respond are the ones that are out of work. And how many how many uh, officers do we tie up during that time that are occurs and how many agencies respond? We typically have uh, 24 different agencies, so uh, typically depends on the operation. Sometimes they need six guys, three guys, two guys, or sometimes they need a large team. So, But uh, San Juan is never... Uh, uh, we always have minimal staffing, so if you're you're working, you're not you are not allowed to respond to uh, any any emergency, uh, unless it's it's in, it's in San Juan. So our officers here in San Juan assigned to the team uh, do not respond unless they're off duty. Uh, they're not working on duty, so we try to make sure that priority is San Juan, as well, of course. So, but Built of different agencies yeah, we have yes, sir, we have four different teams from different agencies. So depends on the level of expertise. Some uh, sometimes operations required for uh, SWAT operators are very expert in the area, so we only assign certain people to that operation. So what's the total of MOUs we have with the different agencies? I think uh, this is the 25th uh, MOU, yes, uh, and we're talking about police, fire, and EMS. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Second the motion. There's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mission. So next item, consider authorizing city manager to enter into interlocal cooperation contract between the city of San Juan and Texas State University in conjunction with the Health and Tobacco Education and Enforcement Grant. Chief? Yeah, this is a grant that we applied uh, every year, so it's to make sure that we target those stores that sell um, tobacco to underage uh, juveniles. So we have a structured control operation that we do, and, and we every year uh, we tend to uh, receive some grant money and it's a good uh, community uh, program that we have because we do have uh, some kids that want to go purchase you know, tobacco products in areas that they shouldn't be. How long have you been getting this grant? I think that this is probably our fifth grant. So we've been working this since probably 2010. Okay. Yes. So. Uh, is there a motion approved? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. The next item, consider authorizing the city mayor to authorize the city of San Juan to enter into a resolution for negotiation for an agreement for the reorganization and consolidation of the MPOs. Mayor? Right. Mayor, uh, Commissioner, this is an item that, uh, as you know, uh, it's over the MPO. There's been some uh, talks back and forth as to how do we reorganize the MPOs in different cities into one locality. So the Dalgo County is... Uh, actually combining efforts with all the different cities within the Hidalgo County so that additional funding can be granted to this region. The way it is now, it's uh, on a per city, city per city. And one of the things that, that hurt us is that as a one of the big cities and the big cities coalition, we're probably the smallest city. So the, uh, the uh, end effect of it is that we don't get enough or much funding coming over this way. So the way they're planning it and doing it is, if it goes to Hidalgo County, Hidalgo County will disperse the, the funding that'll, that'll give us a better opportunity to get additional or more funding. Uh, oh, go ahead. So do we, um, I know at one time the talk was that we had to have so many residents of, or the population in the city had to be at like 20,000 to make sure that they guarantee us one seat on, this, on the table. 
Is that still the same thing, or has it changed? Right now, they're still in the talk as far as who's coming to the table, but I know that the city of McAllen, uh, the mayor, Jim Darling, is, um, I know he's on the table, but they're supposed to go into some sort of uh, um, voting on, on the MPO, but the whole point of, of having this and merging, merging as a Rio Grande Valley um, MPO, because we're gonna start, we'll be able to compete with the bigger cities like uh, uh, Harris County and, and, and Dallas County when it comes to funding. Yeah, no, stuff like I, that. I understand that and, and, and it's great, you know, but I just wanna make sure that San Juan is also has a chair in the table because at, at the talks at that time, you know, two, three years when I was sitting there, uh, that was a talk and it was a talk was that, you know, we were gonna merge, but it was cities that would have 20,000 or higher would get one one chair at the table, and I just want to make sure that someone stays on the table. Yeah, no, correct. Uh, so. I agree. Well, according to this, if we look at it on page one, it does state that uh, the cities that are allocated board members are as follows, Brownsville 4, McAllen 3, Harlington 2, Edinburgh 2, FAR 2, and Mission 2. All other cities over 50,000 population are allocated one board member. We're not at 50,000, so or is that excluded? What's about 30, 40? About a little bit over 40. 40. Over 40. So we mm -hmm. wouldn't have a seat at the table. So does it benefit us, benefit us to approve this resolution if we're not even going to be invited to participate? That answer that question. But if it's, uh, if it's about participating at the MPO level, I'm assuming that the, uh, it'll still stay, such as one, uh, one member here. It's, but it's assumed, right? Right. It's not guaranteed. I'm not, I'm not really sure on that. And the issue with it then was that Cameron County was going to have, like we had like 20 here, or 24, and 24 up to Cameron County, so we'd have a total of 50-something on the board of the MPO. And that's great, but part of it was like the Port of Brownsville and some other organizations that had a seat there, which they were not gauged by population. And so we just want to make sure that we do keep a chair in that organization. In that area. Exactly. And who would be the representative? I, I know. Uh, right, now the, right now is the mayor. Yes, but w if it all if it all uh, changes, well, obviously to the to the super appeal, right? Something like that. And, and, and you know, we <coughs> could have participation that we could be there and make comments in the MPO, but that we would not be sitting in the voting chair that would vote for the things that would go in the MPO. So that's just my concern, you know. I, I think so. it's a great idea of, of coming together and, and coming, you know, I know the money and I've been there when we talked about the money and that was the reason that it was gonna come up, but I just wanna make sure that we fight for our share, to have that chair in the table to be able to negotiate our MPO projects in the future. Can we bring this item back, to, uh, you know, for the next meeting and, and uh, get a little more information, to, you know, where do we stand? Go ahead and table this item for the, for the next. We'll get information on. Thank you. <coughs> next item on the consent agenda, consider, uh, there's, there's three items. Consider second and final reading of an ordinance authorizing direction of the uh, stop signs at the intersection of Cesar Chavez and Ridge Roads. Uh, the monthly correction reports for March 2019, and we have the meeting minutes of January the 8th, 2019, and March the 12th, 2019. On these items, I'd like to pull March 12th, 2019, and bring it back at the next meeting, because there's, there's several uh, mistakes in there that I'd like to fix before bringing it and approving it by, by you all. March 12th? Yes, sir. Okay. So at this time, is there anything other than March 12th that we need to amend or modify under consent agenda? I just have a question, if I may, Mayor. Go ahead, sir. Um, Ms. Calvasos, as f who does the, the minutes for you? The only reason I'm asking is because I noticed that in the previous meeting we had, we had the uh, minutes for January the 22nd, I believe it was, and, th and this meeting we have January the 8th. Is there a reason why we jumped around? So do we have February's already completed? Um, have it. Okay, and yet we have
have March. That, that's my concern. If we can yeah, keep them consecutively. Uh huh. Okay. We'll see if we can do it to whether can take it, please. That's all I have, ma'am. Thank you. That being said, is there a motion so to move? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 This meeting has been adjourned at 6 36 p.m.